sexual swear words. The video certificates are there to give you the chance to make an informed choice. They allow you to have peace of mind and be entertained. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the film. Wasted time and paper. Say hello to Video Writer, the first word processor for the home that helps you write better. It erases mistakes on screen before they appear on paper. Do or undo. When you're proud of it, print it. Video Writer by Magnavox. May the gloss in Ross be a good gloss. May the window sills of Winchester shine. Color well. Now, preview time. When it comes to entertainment, you can't beat a good film. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. There's definitely something very weird going on here. Detective Roger Mortis <laughs> has a problem. Dead. But Detective Bigelow is bringing him back alive. We have something on the monitor, Captain. That's okay. Don't get up. Hold you not to get up. Now, he's got 12 hours to solve the toughest murder case of his career. His own. That's it. From now on, I'm a vegetarian. How do you fight this thing? Maybe we could drown it in A1 sauce. Treat Williams. Sit down. And Joe Piscopo are dead heat. You shoot them, they don't die. can't keep a good cop dead. The best damn bounty hunter in the business. I didn't do nothing. I'm clean. I'm clean. Oh, I ain't no cop. When they jump, he flips out. He's a professional. You got some psycho running loose in the streets, and I'm the only son of a bitch who can bring him in for you. Who's making out like a bandit? I thought you were going to protect me. The hell, I am protecting. But no, he's not out for the money. What's your game, Kenna? Who you are? I want out. He's still the only one who knows what this guy looks like. He's in for his life. <laughs> Damn you, Wilson! Wings Hauser. Oh, I can Reason to die. Bring it on. On video cassette from Bitmark Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Perfect Movie. Please welcome your host, Richard Sandley. We made it, T. We made it. Welcome. 
Welcome to Richard Sandling's perfect movie with me, Richard Sandling's perfect movie. Ah, oh, what a show we've got for you. We've got a, we've got a, we've got so much. We've got a front row. We've got guests. We've got comedy. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, from the front row, from the front row, give me a cheer, front row, if you've been to uh, Perfect Movie before. Yay! Yay. 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 Give Woo, me a cheer time. if you've never been to Perfect Movie before. Woo. Give me a cheer. Yay! Yay. Comparing. <laughs> 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 Welcome. For those of you who don't know what Perfect Movie is, Perfect Movie is a show about films where we... Uh, celebrate uh, everyone's favourite films, your favourite films, films you love. It's a joyous show about things, you know, that you love. This is not a miserable show. It's not about films you hate. You're not one of those films you go, what do you think about that? Oh, he's rubbish. What do you think about that? He's rubbish. He's rubbish. He's rubbish. It's not one of those shows. This is, what do you think about that? It's great. Let me tell you how good it is. It's That's the sort of show we're doing. It's a show about joy. Uh, uh, obviously, assuming some films are rubbish, uh, we, we're not idiots. We have, we have some concepts of quality control, but uh, this is about the films we love. Uh, the idea of a perfect movie, I think, has been described as a film you could watch anytime. Anytime someone suggests watching it, you would watch it. Um, a film, if it finished, as soon as it finished, you could watch it straight away again. Uh, I should have been preparing for this show, but the horror channel was showing Tremors, so naturally I watched that instead of doing any work, despite the fact that I own it on video <laughs> and DVD and have seen it 25,000 times. Uh, never, never gets boring. I, I mean, I mean, I'm actually quite a big Tremors fan. I think they're doing a new one or a new TV series. I'm very excited. I actually have all the Tremors films, including the 18th century origin story uh, and the TV series, uh, which is uh, which is acceptable. Uh, <laughs> it's a very good show. So welcome to the show. Uh, I'll be talking to some of the people in the front row about some of their favourite films. As always, people on Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook, do comment. Uh, if you have anything to say, any questions, any queries, any comments, do comment. I will be coming to uh, your comments at some point during the show to see if there's any answers. Now, for example, Holly, do we have anything on Facebook yet? Yeah, they're talking about Cell. Cell? Why? Yeah, Why? It's got vegetarianism and it's post-apocalyptic. Oh, good, good. And then how do you, how are we spelling cell for people who might want to Google that? C E double L, as in ah, prison cell. cell. Yeah, so could, could it be French? Could it be cell? No. Good. <laughs> That's what everyone's talking about. So everyone's talking about a vegetarian apocalyptic nightmare on Facebook. Yeah, basically. <laughs> good, That's how good. the conversation started. <laughs> it's nice to, yeah, good. Good. That's what I want my audience to be, socially conscious and also apocalyptic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very excited. Very excited. It's lovely to see everyone here. Uh, one of the things, if you are enjoying this, um, you can, uh, you know, well, I have, uh, uh, you can see there's a tip jar on coffee, Ko-Fi. Cof I don't know how you pronounce it. I've only ever seen it written down, but you can buy me a kebab. That would be incredible. Also, um, as is currently the situation, we have protests for Black Lives Matters. There are some information on the Facebook page. If there isn't now, there will be. Uh, where if you would rather donate to that or try to be helpful with that cause, that would be an exceptional thing to do instead. Or if you want to donate to me and then specify that you would like me to give my kebab to them, that is fine. I will pass that. I will pass that kebab on. I am happy to sort of do that for you. I am keen uh, to be, uh, you know helpful if you think that would be useful if you want to give it to me or give it to them or give it to me to give to them that is fine whatever you want to do we encourage it uh, also the other acts uh, are here as well so that's perfect uh if you want to uh do anything good that would be advisable this is a joyous show we encourage love here uh i will be talking to people in a moment about some of their favorite films uh in the front row what I, in a section i like to call working the zoom uh, and uh, if you have a favourite film, do let me know what that favourite film is. There are no right or wrong answers. It is merely your favourite film. Uh, as I say, some answers are more right than others, but uh, you cannot be uh, you cannot be incorrect. Uh, do we have anybody in the front row who has a special film, has a favourite film they would like to talk about before I choose someone? Chris. Yes, uh, I, I would say Fly to the Navigator. Light of the Navigator is what we call a correct answer. <laughs> but it's just Some such... answers are more correct than others, but that is a correct answer. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's just such a magical film. It and it's just it's, it's so full of nostalgia. <laughs> 
what I like about it is is that in the true sort of 80s movie kid movie style it is actually as a grown up quite like flawed in its internal logic but the point is it's not for grown ups to be smug and literate about it's about kids to go that was the best thing i've ever seen in my life by giving everyone what they want there's bits in it where um he hides in the food cart and breaks out of a NASA facility, which has two security guards. <laughs> but he, he's going to go, and the guy comes in, he's like, how did he get out? We had security everywhere. And you're like, no, he does. But as a kid, you're like, yeah, he's escaped. But as a grown-up, you're like, there's two guards. Like, I, even I can see this needs, like, this this management's pretty restructuring immediately. This is a total <laughs> NASA breakdown. But, yeah, and also just, you know, com- there's got some great jokes in it as well. The great, like, uh, uh, he said he wanted a phone home joke is like a great, it's one of the earliest jokes I remember being funny from films. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's just such, and like the effects as well, and you've got Paul Rubens as the voice of Max. Compliant. Yeah. <laughs> and also, is it I do not leak, you leak. Yes. <laughs> it even starts, well, it even starts with a great, we've got, the, got, the, got what you think is a flying saucer, it's not, it's a frisbee, and a dog jumps up and catches it in his mouth in slow motion, you're like, yes, come on. Oh, very excited. Apparently that was a film they were going to remake, but uh, Tron Legacy was a disaster, so they've shelved all that. That and the Black Hole was going to be was going to be on the slate for like remaking. Wow. Uh, oh, but I think Tron Legacy ruined everything. And it's a shame because Tron Legacy is actually visually, it's amazing. Yeah. And I do wish they'd done another one. People hate Tron Legacy in a way that I don't quite understand when there are far worse films than Tron Legacy that people go absolutely mental about. Tron Legacy doesn't really deserve the kicking it gets when i watched it was like oh it was good i was like this is this is the worst film ever i'm never gonna watch films again you're like it's not it's not that bad it's not even like people had that weird i love tron sort of fanboy meltdown it was just like that was the worst film ever and you like watch it you went this is this is just not the worst film ever it's fine like you know it's fine exactly (laughs) you know just on sheer admin admin of actually putting a film together it's at least a six out of ten film (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like, no, just, yeah, like logistically speaking the fact that they actually made it makes it a six out of ten film in my opinion exactly i, I think for me the only issue i had with that film was that the, the younger jeff bridges because that did look really spooky but apart from that i loved it you know yeah. i mean it was such a beautiful thing and a great soundtrack as yeah. well I mean, like a sort of like soundtrack. a you know, a, a techno techno Han Zimmer. That's what I want from your film soundtracks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what a techno Han Zimmer. Come on. <laughs> what we want. That's what we want. Excellent. Does anyone else have a have a film they would like to talk about? Anyone else? Anyone else feeling uh, feeling uh, favourite filmy? Let's talk about anyone. Don't make me. I'll, I'll just choose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll just choose. Does anyone want to? Does anyone want to come 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 to me? No one. <laughs> no one's got a favorite. Will. Will looks like someone who has a favorite film. Hello, uh, Will. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Very um, How I, are you? I love Life is Beautiful. Life is Beautiful. Yes. And it is. It's, a, you know, it's very nice. good. Uh, but like, it is a beautiful film. It's very hard to make a film like that with the subject matter and like step, like step correctly through that because yeah. you could easily you could easily misstep in a film like that and not take it seriously enough or take it too seriously it's very hard to get that tonally right and he does i think it's the sort of you know yeah you've anyway, heard his clown of it but also the sort of also you know this sort of yeah I, yeah it's a really sort of beautiful and sad but yeah yes a good choice sir well done well done awesome um we just finished watching fallout uh the mission impossible as well just before coming on so that was a pretty nice, easy, easy oh, for us. To yeah, this. but those Mission Impossible ones, apart from the second one, are great, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> like, apart from the second one, which is terrible, which is terrible. Uh, <laughs> John Woo, John Woo, is, you know, does not, I don't know what it is. John Woo, like, doesn't is work in tough? America. But, like, he's from other John Woo's films when he's not making them in America. Uh, I <laughs> don't know who it is, but uh, he's great, but. Yeah, I forget which one it is, but there's just bits in all those ones. I mean, Tom Cruise, I know people have a weird thing about Tom Cruise, but you, you get your money's worth out of a Tom Cruise movie, like, just for yeah. sort of... <laughs> and they're good films as well, like, they're enjoyable to watch, mm. like, good plots and stuff, but just, you know, just the stunts and the nonsense is just incredible. 
more 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 Tom Cruise like defying defying time by the older he gets the more nimble he gets he's like sort of, <laughs> he's like the Merlin of fighting <laughs> he's incredible that was a yes good good what about you Kate do you have any do you have a favorite film while, while you're there and stuck in the uh, stuck in the glare do you have a favorite film we watched um Black Klansman last night yes really good film um, yes yes Nice. Should have done better. Should have done better. Should have done better. Should have been given more accolades. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, as you know, I always find accolades are accolades are uh, are an odd thing. And I'm speaking as someone who's won who's won accolades. They don't really mean anything. Uh, and I can say that as an award winner. Uh, no. <laughs> doesn't really make any difference in the grand scheme of things good's good uh you know you know don't worry if you don't win an award you're still brilliant and if you do win an award don't worry other people will be more successful than you so <laughs> <laughs> i'm not bitter. it's a show about joy i'm not bitter i'm not bitter <laughs> <laughs> oh, i could do panel shows come on <laughs> I'll do a mainstream joke for you. I'll do a mainstream joke for you to prove that I'm, you know, this isn't just a niche, niche thing. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> when you're uh, trawling through your uh, Criterion Special Edition uh, DVD collection and uh, you can't find the film that you're looking for, <laughs> and then you realise you've confused Agnes Varda with Andre Vida. <laughs> 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 we, we've all done it. <laughs> we've all done it. Ah, oh, you'll be playing that at school on Monday. Uh, so uh, let's move. You know, we're gonna move on. Is there, is there any? Are there any comments from Facebook about favourite movies, Heidi? Well, oh, Facebook are just crazy talking about all sorts of things between themselves. They're having um, their own party. Are they basically? We have. We got a splinter group. Yeah, yeah. They're having their own party. Black Hole remake. It's already very special. Yes, exactly. It's all yes. You know, I mean, yeah, it is a great movie. It's like you know, it was one of those. It's one of the many things that came out when people were trying to cash in on the success of Star Wars. <laughs> Everyone went, "Oh my God, what are we going to do?" Everyone really liked sci-fi, as if that was a new idea that people might like. Seven ninety seventy seven was the first year anyone liked sci-fi, <laughs> <laughs> and they were, "We should maybe make some sci-fi." And they went, "Well, let's what can we do?" Well, we haven't really got any time or or or, or thought, but we'll try our best and do this. Uh, you know. So I mean, you know, efforts and things like the Black Hole are, are, are like great, but interesting in their sort of uh, just pushing them out to be part of a thing. You know, you can't manufacture a movement. Um, also, I, um, I just want to point out because it's screaming to be they're screaming to be noticed. I want to point out this. Yes. <laughs> and I want to point out. <laughs> This. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Look at her little I'd, bow tie. Also, I'd like to point out that this is not me pretending that I don't care that it's Holly's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fact that unlike people who apparently know her better than I do, <laughs> I know she doesn't like having a fuss made about her birthday. <laughs> no. Um, Despite the fact that this is, a, you know, a lovely thing for Holly. I did that for uh, them more than anything because they're my two sisters and if they're not getting daily attention, then they're not happy bunnies, so... <laughs> <laughs> so like, can I put this down now, though, because my arm's aching? No, you've got to hold it all the way through the whole show. You, hell, you, you know, you, 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 you've got to commit to your... You've got to commit, commit to, to the bit. <sighs> we made this, especially for Holly, you know. Good. Yeah. Oh, you didn't recycle them from some other Holly's birthday then. Yeah. <laughs> Same sign you got last year. They just. I'm sorry, you derailed the show, Rich. Have a Carry on. As to who's got the best hat. Yeah. They're because both really good hats. Carry on the show. Why? Well, Rich. <laughs> Maybe I could try with my best hat. How's that for her? How's that for her? Hey. Ma'am. Okay. Hat. okay. There we go. Anyway. Oh, we've all got hats. Everyone's got hats. Well, I think I feel like we're getting off topic. Best hat in a movie, anyone? <laughs> Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Yeah. Come on. Well, I would say <laughs> um, uh, John Voight 
Midnight Cowboy, but that's just that's what came to mind. Yes. It's not this, but it's a hat. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. This is yeah. We're going. Yeah, we're, this is it. We're, this is happening, people. With best hats in films, go. Everyone needs <laughs> to get their favorite hat. We've got we've got Midnight Cowboy. We've got Indiana Jones. Best hats in films. Odd job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could. Sorting cat. Some came running. My <laughs> fair lady. Off in the, the cat in the hat. Any film. Cat in the hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although that's you know that that's like that has to be a hat. This is this is like we're talking about films where hats were not implicit. So best incidental feel, uh, hat in a film is what yeah, you're asking. Best 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 happenstance of hattery. <laughs> I think Whitnell had a hat. I think that sounds like uh, is that a, that could be the new Wes Anderson movie, The Happenstance of Hattery. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that. Like the good, the bad, the ugly, fistful of dollars. Yes. Well, I mean any. Well, that's, I mean, I always think of ponchos when I think of those films, though, rather than hats, you know. Short but, Round's hat. Short Round's hat, yes. Yes. See, we're back to Indiana Jones again. The whole film is basically a hat, a hat lover's dream. It is. <laughs> hat lover's dream. I mean, obviously, there's, there's probably some other hats, you know. The guys have got it in Facebook. They've got the shoe hat in Brazil, the sorting hat, uh, yes. Bubba yeah. Gump shrimp cap. Gandalf's hat. Oh. Yeah, Gandalf's what I was going to go for. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, team, that was an unexpected uh, trip into Hatdom. I'm very excited by that. Very excited. By that. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else in the front row have a favourite film they'd like to talk about? Favourite film they're excited about? Anyone? Anybody want to talk to me? Nobody wants Forrest to Forrest Gump. <laughs> Forrest Gump. Unbelievable. No one's got a favourite film. That's, that's fine. That's fine. We'll come back to everyone in a bit. It's in a bit. So, so one of the things I was, I was thinking about, like, has anybody here ever uh, been uh, in the front row? I know because Don works in the cinema, well, works in the cinema, like manages a cinema. I was thinking, I used to work in a cinema. Has anybody here else here worked in a cinema before? No, that'd be weird. No. 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 So you don't understand the pain that me and Don have felt from having to deal with all of you bastards coming in <laughs> don't know how works. I don't know if this is the same in, in America but you don't have to know anything about films to work in a cinema you think oh, I love films I work in a cinema but it's basically it's a cleaning job uh, it's, it's a customer service cleaning job and all you yeah. do is spend all your time cleaning up popcorn after people who can't carry it from here to here without dripping and throwing it all on the floor and then walking away as if it had nothing to do with them whatsoever yeah uh, it's no. like, go, and also, like, they come up to you. The worst, I don't know, what's the worst job to have in your cinema? I mean, I don't mean, I mean, like, if you, when you was working there, what does the, what's the position no one wants to have? Is it like kiosk, box office? Is there? A... Uh, I'd probably say the worst position to have would be busser, which is the ones that go and they don't just clean the normal theaters, they clean the theaters of the people that's eaten like food, food, because yeah. I, I'm over the kitchen and everybody that sends out the actual food. So people order hamburgers and nachos and they'll take their plate with still nacho cheese on it and just put all their trash in there ah. in the cheese. And yeah, being a busser is, is terrible. Like ah. I would never wish that a worst enemy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're saying is when you allocate the rotor and uh, <laughs> people are given that job, they're your worst enemy. <laughs> Well, luckily, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't schedule them, so okay. I, I lucked out on that one. Because that was the thing, yeah. The worst, the worst job I think we had was um, bottom, was was basically the kiosk was taking the money for the uh, drinks and popcorn. Because basically, what happened was you would sit there and you people would come up to you with some popcorn and a drink, and you, because it's popcorn drink in a cinema, would say that'll be thirty seven pound fifty, please. And <laughs> every single every single person would go, how much? <laughs> and just scream at you like, oh, you see where you make your money blah, 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 and then like just give you shit for basically buying and like didn't make you buy it mate uh, you know it's like, it's basically, it's basically, it's basically six hours just being given shit by every single customer because they decided to buy things that were expensive that they knew were expensive uh, yeah. the other thing that was also uh, difficult when you used to work on bottom box of it all, was that um, you'd have a, another thing where uh, you worked on bottom box office people would come in and 
like I remember this one woman she came in she bought so she had like four kids uh, and she bought like some drinks and some sweets and stuff. And it came it did come to about twenty seven pounds for all the sweets and stuff she bought and she was so tired and she just said oh, it's just so much money to get and to be quiet for an hour. <laughs> I'm so like sorry for it. She was like, I just I got bought tickets and I've got I'm just so tired. I'm just so tired. I can't I can't go with it. So it was uh yeah, but working in the cinema I was I, there. My other thing was I used to work I used to I used to work on Hagen I used to train people how to do Hagen Dars because Hagen was our cinema of choice, was our ice cream choice before Ben and Jerry's, and I would train people how to do Hagen Dars, which was great because it, what that meant was you would basically eat all the ice cream and make everything you would sell in Hagen-Dazs and eat all of it and then make everyone else eat all of it because you'd have to know what every single ice cream flavour tasted like, have to know what every single drink tastes like. So you just spent like a whole day just eating ice cream. Really? And hagen ice cream at that, which is like obviously incredible. Uh, open for sponsorship. Uh, <laughs> 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 I think it's a scoop ratio, how you can get, because like one scoop is a scoop, it's supposed to be a certain weight, you have to know how many scoops, like how many balls is a scoop, you know what I mean? Because you can either scoop you can do the little three little balls, which makes one scoop. Depends what you you know. So a lot to it. It's a lot to it. It's not just it's not just ice cream. You know what I mean, don't just go to the. There's an ice cream. There's like science. I was basically an ice cream. I was like a sommelier of ice cream. Is it uh, <laughs> I don't know what a sommelier of ice cream is, but uh, it's good. Yeah, yeah. So moving on, team. After that, <laughs> after all that conversations moving. about goodness knows what ice cream and. And who knows? Who knows? And cinemas. And cinemas, and the, the misery of working. I mean, I'll come back. There'll be more cinema tales throughout the throughout the shows. Uh, you know, but team, are you ready for an act? Yeah. 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 The correct Woo! answer. Woo! On Facebook, are you ready for an act? Yes. We're going to assume yes. they yes. <laughs> uh, now we need to shout out a film quote. Does anyone in the front row have a favourite film quote we could get to shout out? Tell you what, as we've mentioned, flight of the navigator. Let's all just shout out compliance. Compliance, <laughs> <laughs> compliance, not compliance. Compliance, compliance. Well, not, wait, 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 not, this is not jazz. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'll count you in. I'll do the one, two, three, fours, one, three. We'll count you in, ready, <laughs> and then we'll go for it. So after, after one, two, three, we want wait, one, two, three, compliance. Compliance. What is that? Compliance. 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 I'm explaining what's happening. What is, I don't. How is this complicated? I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> if you want to do your best Max impression, that is perfectly fine. After three, are we ready? One, two, three. Compliance. So, like that. This is this is great. It's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears of timings. Some of you too early. Some of you were too late. One, two, three. Compliance. Yes. Yes. Oh, what a time to be alive. Will you please whoop and cheer and welcome your first act, Mr. Tom Tuck. No. Woo! No, no, no. Um, I'd like to say that um, Zoom has made Richard Sandling's comparing style slightly more awkward than uh, normal, but this is actually just how it always happens. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> really true. I mean, endearing, but definitely incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, I was reminded after your t tales of cinema um, of what I did for my 18th birthday, uh, which um, was going to be uh, going to the cinema to watch the re-release of Clockwork Orange. Now, <laughs> it was a Friday and the big Odeon in Leeds wasn't showing that when we arrived at the cinema, so we had to make a last minute decision. What did we go see instead? Lake Placid. <laughs> Lake <laughs> fucking Placid. <laughs> the scene in, in, in that film that I remember vividly, someone picks up a toe. A set that not connected to anything. And turns to the other person and goes, was this your friend? <laughs> and <I> reply, <laughs> no. He was tall. 
<laughs> oh, delish. But the best thing we did, because we, we, we were going to watch a good film and then we were not watching a good film. So pick and mix. We decided to pool our resources and fill a pick and mix bag so full that you couldn't fold it over at the top. And it cost us about £12 <laughs> in the year 2000. <laughs> and we, 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 we took our oblong of sugar <laughs> into the stream and we all got so hyped up on sugar, the, only, the other 11 people in there must have really hated us. But, you know, birthdays. <laughs> now... Uh, um, obviously, um, uh, Rich has, has pointed out, and will point out always, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an award winner. I am merely a nominee. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of him from my uh, uh, once-nominated show. Didn't win. Lost to uh, someone I'm in a sketch group with. Um <laughs> And it, 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 it did so well that Empire Magazine actually asked me to write for them. <laughs> uh, so that's £250 they won't be getting back. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll reiterate that my name is Tom Tuck, um, and that's my real name, not a stage name. <laughs> Didn't make it up. Uh -huh. Tanya, it's just what you actually have to use to address me. Ludicrous. Tom Tuck. Tom Tuck. My name is Tom Tuck and I'm a human. I'm a person. <laughs> I'm a person. Not a fairy tale character or a minorly invasive surgical procedure. <laughs> <laughs> there might be jokes in this bit. You just have to watch out for them. Now, um, I have watched every single Disney straight-to-DVD movie uh, so that you don't have to. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there are a lot of these films. I don't, has anyone um, on the front row actually seen a Disney STD? Sorry, yes. that's my acronym. <laughs> <laughs> uh, STD stands for straight to DVD. Very clever. Um, but actually somebody pointed, pointed out to me that the D in STD stands for DVD, which is itself an acronym. We'll be caught in an infinite regression before long. So I've had to change it to, a, to STD VD. Have <laughs> 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 you seen a Disney STD VD? <laughs> Anyone? Uh, yeah, Don? Pocahontas 2! Return to the new world! Um, I like Pocahontas too, but probably not the reason for the, the reason an American would like it because I, I, it's odd to see a film, an American film, a Disney film, um, where they fly a Union Jack. Not everyone sailing beneath it is a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good to see bear baiting in a film, isn't it? Especially one for kids. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you like about it, Don? Nothing. Oh, no, I did. I, to be fair, you didn't say you liked it. You just said you'd seen it. Yeah. <laughs> why, why have you seen it? Why have I seen it? Yes. Oh, that's a long story. It, it involves um, too much time, uh, internet out, and a lot of DVDs. <laughs> Who bought it? Uh, I don't know. It's it's been in our DVD box for as long as I can remember. Wow. Just just like 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 everyone's a cop got a copy of Queen Greatest Hits too. You have a copy of Pocahontas too. Yeah, my favorite. <laughs> does, um, does anyone know, does anyone know what the very first Disney ST DVD was? <laughs> Way back in 1994, when it was technically STV straight to video or Scottish Television equivalent in terms of quality. <laughs> No, anyone? Nobody? No. Uh, no. Aladdin 2? Uh, Correct, Dom. You are my target audience. <laughs> what was it? 
it technically Return of Jafar. Um, <laughs> and, okay, so it was the first time that they had a go at making one of these films. Um, and they made some mistakes. <laughs> uh, no, no, number one mistake two out of the first three songs go to Iago the parrot <laughs> <laughs> and whatever you can say about the actor Gilbert Gottfried he's not a natural singer <laughs> just forget about love <laughs> <laughs> and that's grating uh, to an adult ear, let alone the unformed ones it's technically meant for. And the second mistake they made is there's a character in it. He's a, he's a sort of comedy Arab sidekick, and, and they're giving him a name that is both definitely racist, but also a critique of the film itself. And they're a big company, Disney, aren't they? Famously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they must have had meetings. What shall we call our comedy Arab sidekick? Shall we give him an Arabic name? No. <laughs> Just a name that sounds a bit Arabic. Right. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. Just make one up. Okay. Well, off the top of my head, how's Ab Ismail? Ab Ismail. Perfect. <laughs> How did they do that? How did they manage to do that? And the third mistake, and probably the biggest one, is they didn't get Robin Williams back. Mm. He's a big tick next to Aladdin 1, a.k.a. Aladdin. <laughs> Instead, they have Dan Castellaneta, the voice of Homer Simpson, doing a Robin Williams impression. But it's an impression of Robin Williams when he's not been allowed any cocaine. And nobody wants that! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they want a coked up blue guy, but they feel the lack. It's an impression of Robin Williams when Robin Williams is sticking to a script. Bullshit. <laughs> they do get Robin Williams back and apparently they bribed him with a Picasso. <laughs> is that true? And that film makes no sense. Like, no sense. It's as if they've just animated everything that's gone up Robin Williams' nose and out of his mouth. <laughs> An aubergine in a hat! <laughs> Fine, draw that. When got <laughs> <laughs> there are 52 of these films. Oh, wow. Yeah, it seems like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> seems like a lot. Uh, but I've come to the realisation that numbers are only really about context. Because if you say to somebody, I've got 52. <laughs> we'll need to know on what. <laughs> I've got 52 bodies under the patio. Might be too many. <laughs> that is not enough. For this coffee, please leave. <laughs> three. Sounds like a little number, doesn't it? Little three. Little old three. Not necessarily in context. Because if you say to somebody, I have three Ricky Martin albums, sounds like too many. It's <laughs> 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 not. It's not. Well, then, it's an excellent record. Y en un rincón caímos juntos en rito de pasión. Sentir su piel, sentir calor. Ella puso el deseo, ella puso el control. <laughs> she bangs, guys. She bangs. <laughs> the joke there being obviously that that's not on Vuelve. It's on Sound Loaded. Um, <laughs> has anyone actually, uh, anyone else actually seen another Disney STD? VD. I, I think the computer wore tennis shoes. I think that was one of them. The computer war tennis. Sh oh, sorry. I should probably tell you the rules. It's got to be animated, ah, no, no okay. CGI, or well, live action. Lilo and Stitch 2. Stitch has the glitch? Yes. 
see, I accidentally downloaded that that one in French, and I thought, you know what, my French is good enough. Turns out not good enough at all. So I downloaded it, downloaded it in Spanish to make myself feel better. <laughs> and it's all right, actually. Tits and Split. Uh, Lilo and Stitch itself is a very underrated um, uh, film, I feel. Um, there's also, I don't include Stitch exclamation mark the movie, which is obviously just a trailer for Stitch exclamation mark the series. So that's not in the 52, but I have seen it. Um, obviously, the rules mean that there are certain films that get knocked out of that. So um, has, anyone, has anyone seen Air Bud? Bet Don has. Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah. How many sequels do you think there are to Air Bud? There's uh, four. Well, if you include the kids, there's five, right? Okay, you you were so close to being right. Yes, <laughs> four sequel to Airbud. So if you don't know Airbud, uh, Don, will you tell them who he is? Uh, he's a dog that plays sports. No, Airbud himself is a dog that plays one specific sport. Basketball. Yes, he plays basketball. He mainly does it with his nose. He doesn't dunk much. Um, <laughs> and all the sequels. They're, they're, they're new dogs who play different sports. So they, they can't even have a team together. It's really sad. Um, <laughs> but the, so uh, uh, there's the one about baseball, seventh inning fetch. Um, there's one about soccer, world pop. Um, there's uh, the, oh, see if you can guess what sport this is from the Airbud film title. Airbud spikes back. Justin. Oh. Jousting? No, it's a, a, no. I, I would fucking Jeffling. love it. <laughs> <laughs> volleyball. Volleyball. Yes, it's volleyball. He mainly does it with his nose. Um, <laughs> and, and, and then, as you rightly point out, there's a there's a spin-off, Air Buddies, which is some puppies for a bit. It's like a sort of eighty minute long Andrex advert, and <laughs> that film has multiple sequels. So there's um, treasure buddies, which is some puppies on an island. There's space buddies, which, yep, that's some puppies in space. Um, <laughs> there's spooky buddies, which is a, some puppies in a house. Um, and at least one other, m m making a total of definitely nine Air Bud films. But none of them count towards the 52, so I've just been watching them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rich, I don't know how long I've been doing. Um, should I start? <laughs> no, I have Carry questions on. about earbuds. Yes. <laughs> no, keep going. The puppies in the house. I mean, is there a narrative to any of these? It's a spooky house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question about Lilo and Stitch too. Okay. Is it not technically straight to TV movie and not straight to DVD? Because didn't it premiere on television? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> animated, um, no CGI, um, by Disney, and uh, not have had a cinema release. So the the overall term straight to DVD includes straight to television because uh, oh. but, uh, and straight to video, but. Uh, that's a pithier title for my own DVD. <laughs> hey, Tom, tell me more about that DVD. Oh, yeah. um, if you're hanging out in the green room afterwards, or if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, send me a message. I have about, I think there are only about 40 left. Um, and they're, they're never, going to, never going to make any more because it's not been very profitable for them. Uh, <laughs> Um, but uh, yes, I, if you would like one with with the full show um, and some extras, including one joke that I forgot to do during the record recorded backstage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think, uh, well, the I'll, I'll end on this is um, the reason that Empire got me to uh, write for them was that um, Lion Kings two and three came out on Blu-ray. And it's probably the only trilogy that Disney have released that really stands up because they're all quite good. Simba's Pride's fine, it's blah, 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 blah. but but the, the real genius is Lion King three, aka Lion King one and a half U.S. release title. 
Um, because if Lion King one is hampered, and it definitely is, <laughs> <laughs> then Lion King three is Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, and that is some highbrow shit for kids. <laughs> <laughs> Simone and Pumper's parallel story. It's also the most meta thing that's ever been put deliberately in front of children. At the beginning, Lion King 3, AK Lion King 1 and a half, Timon and Pumper are sitting in a cinema watching Lion King 1. <laughs> <laughs> In a, film, in a film that didn't get a cinema release. <laughs> and then they pause it. <laughs> well, they know the projection is. <laughs> and then they say, oh, let's tell everybody about what we did. It was the second unit on the first one. <laughs> and yet, the only reason that anyone's bought this film, apart from me, and I am CRB checked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, American, that means I'm safe with children. Uh, <laughs> 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 the only reason anyone's bought this film is so they can stop watching Lion King 1 with the child. <laughs> and in this film, it does all the backstage antics that Timon and Pumba got up to. Do you remember when all, they all, all, the, all the animals bow down, all the giraffes bow down and the, and the zebras bow down? Turns out because it's Pumper did a fart. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, goes back to the cinema. They're watching the credits of Lion King 1. And then these silhouettes come in. It's Mickey. And I don't even like him in his own films. <laughs> and Donald. And Goofy. Have you seen an extremely goofy movie? It's not. It's fucking harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> He's a single father and there's no explanation as to where his wife is, but you can tell in his eyes she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> The silhouette of a woman with seven little silhouetted hats. And they shouldn't be allowed to cross pollinate this shit. That's really confusing. I've got a degree. Admittedly, it's a tutu in philosophy that's standing me in very good stead in the open job market. <laughs> <laughs> and all the silhouettes go, oh, did we miss Lion King? <laughs> 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 Perfect. Damn. So, after the child has been bought this adequate replacement device for Lion King 1, after they've watched it, it tells them, let's watch Lion King 1 again. And they'll want to watch Lion King 1 again. They're very easy to program. Teach. They're very easy to teach. <laughs> and they'll watch Lion King 1 again. They'll all remember about the backstage antics. They'll watch Lion King 3 again. And then they'll want to watch Lion King 1 again. Then 3 again. Then 1 again. Then 3 again. Then 1 again. Then 3 again. Then 1 again. And that's the circle of life. Buy his DVD. Tom Tag, everyone. Tom Tag. Tom, where where can people find you online if they want to check out your stuff? Um, at Turley God um, across the internet, um, uh, which is a quote from King Lear, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to patronise us, mate. We all knew that. <laughs> Excellent work, so was I. Also, I think, I was just thinking about something earlier, I think that um, with the TV movie thing, I think that um, because America is a much bigger country, there's a lot more mileage and things getting a limited cinema release that we don't have the space to have in cinemas over here. So there will be things that come straight to video here that will have actually been in the cinema in America or if it's a TV movie, it won't be broadcast here on TV because there was, at the time, probably only four or, four or five channels. So, you know, 
that's the discrepancy of the American market versus the British market, which is fascinating uh, topic for uh, a comedy show. But, uh, just, <laughs> <laughs> <Anyway. that. laughs> you can't go into the format wars, you can go into the, the, the logistics of distribution. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> is there any, any comments on Facebook, Holly, that we need to address? Um, they're enjoying Tom's new look. We've got Glass Spider Tour era Tom Tuck. Oh, um, yeah. We've got um, Tron Legacy Tom Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Legacy. We've got, I'd buy any used car from Tom Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think I still think Italian Brian Ferry uh, artist like synth band. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's excellent, excellent. So, team, who is anybody? Does anybody in the front row want to play? A, who wants to play a game? Yeah. Uh -huh. Who yeah. wants to play? A game? Yay. Who's going to play? Nobody, That's... you win nothing. You win nothing, and everyone will help. <laughs> Who would like to I'm, play? I played last time, but you I'll did. Play again. Who would like to play? Come on, don't make me choose. Um, go on, I will. You're gonna play, Karen. Yes, Excellent. I can't remember what it is, but anyway, well, like, it's just to do, you're fortunate because I will tell you. Uh, <laughs> so, everyone needs to join in. Everyone needs to join no, in. Sorry, and Rich, just briefly, can we just talk about the fact that Nat Metcalf just walked out the room? <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know. I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It's a little trick we're going to work on. He's going to come in behind me in a minute. <laughs> oh, this is, I feel like I'm. I feel like okay. I'm. This is like we're suddenly going to turn the show into Ghost Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the room and see what's happened. <laughs> We've got to say his name three times to get him to come back or something. <laughs> Nat Metcalf. Nat Metcalf. Nat Metcalf. Aww. Has it worked? You also, uh, you, I think there's, um, I can talk about sequels. I think there's <coughs> up to four Lake Placids now. Is it just three? I get a bit confused, but there's... Uh, five. You ki five? My God. Like you, you, ki you, ki you kill the giant crocodile, then another giant crocodile turn. I mean, you know, you feel like it's not like Jaws where it's the wife and child turn up. You know, looking for it. It's like, <laughs> no, at, at, at the end of the first one, there's the old woman who's feeding the children. Ah. So they were, they were setting setting up for them. Mm. That's the sort of film where they are just going to keep making them because it's just easier to keep making more movies, isn't it? But so moving on to the game. Moving on to the game, Karen, are you ready for the game? So everyone's going to join. Sorry, everyone's going to help you. Everyone's going to help you. We've all seen this popular show, Higher or Lower, Play Your Cards Right. We have to guess whether a playing card in a line is, rated high, is, is higher or lower than the card before it. We have a game called Play Your Video Cards Right, where I will show you four VHS sleeves from my collection, and you have to guess whether the next video is rated higher or lower on IMDb than the film that precedes it. You win nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. What do points make? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> The game for nihilists. So uh, <laughs> nothing matters, nothing's important. Let's just move on. So everyone, I want everyone to join in. I want you're going to play for the team, and I want everyone to help you play. And obviously on Facebook, let's get some cheering. I want to know if it's high or low. So we're going to go. I hope this should work this time. I'm going to try and do me check that my share screen works. Uh, is this it? Yes. Oh, here we go. Come on. Ooh. Ooh. I know, oh, everyone's like, oh, I, said, I know, I know, right? <laughs> so remember, I need everyone, so this, we're going to go for the first get first video. Coming. Karate. Karate oh. Ghostbuster. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to call? Wow. Uh, this is... Karate um, Ghostbuster. I know, look at that, look at that. At the bottom, in case you don't know, in case they did obviously had some space for the book side that would just put his name loads and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, and, and the, 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 yeah, another Jackie Chan adventure, which allows him to display his talent for comedy as well as his vast array of martial arts skills. So, 
That's it. So basically, this is also a spiritual kung fu directed by old, old school legend Wei Lo. Uh, when I say old, old school legend, what I mean is we think of Jackie Chan as like old <laughs> But Jackie Chan was the new wave compared to yeah, this guy. So he also um, he's an actor and director. He did Dragon Fist, Magnificent Bodyguards, To Kill with Intrigue, The Killer Meteors, Fist of Fury, and The Big Boss, amongst many others. He's got 62 directing credits and 107 acting credits. Wow. Most of them good. Uh, this was and shot back to back with Dragon Fist in early 78, bankrupted the uh, studio. <laughs> Uh, and so they lent Jackie Chan out when he made uh, Snake in the Eagle, Shadow and Drunken Master, which made his name. And then because of that, they could then re-release these movies uh, to get success. So you haven't got to guess this one, Karen. You did this because you. But this is this is like where we're starting. But out of interest, what, what do we think this is on IMDb? What would you say, Karen? This is on IMDb. What do you think it's rated? Four point six. Four point six. Oh, let's see. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. It is. Oh, is it moving? Hang on. 5.8. Oh, no. Oh. no. Yes, people say no. Yes, just because the video sleeve's a bit tatty doesn't mean the film's not awesome. And it is Jackie Chan after all. But even, you know, even his bad stuff's good. Very rare. You can say that about everybody. It's always been much higher. Hey? I think it should be much higher. I haven't even seen it, but I'm like, how did I miss this in my life? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I guess. Basically, Jackie Chan... <laughs> It was a bit of a layabout student gets uh, get five ghosts help him learn how to do kung fu. I mean, <laughs> of, all, I mean of all the things people could remake, <laughs> let's remake five <laughs> ghosts teaching someone to do kung fu. It'd be like a Christmas Carol, but like a fighting version of a Christmas Carol. Let's make that happen. <laughs> kung fu Christmas, we'll call it. We'll just do that. That'd be great. We'll do that. The next one, so that's five point eight. Your next film is Empire State. Prepare yourself for a night on the edge. The smell of money, the taste of power, the heat of the night. Look, there's some like sort of classy bird, some shooters, uh, like a shuffle and some people sort of fighting and fighting or kissing and making love with money. It's like, it's very exciting. Very exciting. Uh, this is written and directed by Ron Peck, who made Nighthawks, not the Stallone one, the 1978 one about the school teacher's secret gay life, uh, as well as the film What Can I Do with a Male Nude and Cross Channel, <laughs> as well as many art documentaries, uh, particularly a fan of uh, Hopper and that sort of thing. Uh, this is an admirable attempt to make an East End crime film that is visually arresting without a bleak kitchen sink aesthetic. And uh, time for my movie drone uh, moment. Uh, uh, watch out uh, for the young Eddie Marsan dancing in the nightclub scene. Uh, there you go. So do you think Empire State, uh, an, an East End gangster film made by an art house film director, is going to be higher or lower than 5.8? What do we think, team? What do we think? Lower. 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 I think higher. Lower. Higher. Lower. Higher. higher. What are you saying, Karen? Yeah. You speak on the other half. What are we having? I'm going to say slightly lower. Slightly lower? It is slightly lower. Five. Let's move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. That's good. We're there. Alien Factor. (laughs) (laughs) AKA Metamorphosis colon The Alien Factor. Uh, Written and directed by an actor and stuntman who has directed pretty much nothing else but has some very interesting comedy web series credits to his name. And I do actually mean that as a compliment. Uh, originally entitled and filmed as Deadly Spawn to the Metamorphosis, it was intended to be a sequel to The Deadly Spawn. Uh, production started in 1987, but due to the abundant stop motion creations and special effects, it took years longer to make, and it was only released straight to video in 1993. And if you can see, the Talos Corporation has been conducting genetic experiments with alien cells from another galaxy. It's very, very exciting. Uh, contamination alert seals the complex from the outside help, and the corporation has to now wage war against the <laughs> alien. So do you think that is higher or lower than five? Much lower. What do you think, team? Lower. 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 Lower Lower than five. You've got the final say, Karen. What do you think? I think lower. It is lower. Come on, you've got one more and you one more and you win nothing. One more. (laughs) The next one we've got. Truck Turner. Isaac Hayes is a (laughs) 
He's a skip tracer, the last of the bounty hunters, living on blood money and borrowed time. When his employer is beaten up and his partner killed, truck turner hunts down the murderers. Isaac Hayes is truck turner. Uh, so we got directed by Jonathan Cap, did the accused, White Line Fever and Unlawful Entry, and co-written by Oscar Williams, who wrote Black Belt Jones and Hot Potato, and Michael Allen, who wrote Enter the Dragon and adapted Flash Gordon for the screen. It was originally written for Robert Mitchum, uh, and then he dropped out, James Coburn then dropped out, and then they decided to make it an urban picture and cast uh, Isaac Hayes, uh, because he was popular when to get into acting. Uh, this is the only Nichelle Nichols black exploitation movie. Uh, and the other two interesting facts about this film is that Yafet Koto only did it because he uh, needed money after a divorce, and Dick Miller is wearing his own jacket. <laughs> if you've not seen Dick, Miller, Dick Miller's jacket, it is it is it is pretty awesome. It's a big like a pink jacket. It's his own jacket. There you go. So if anybody, what do you think? Higher or lower than four point eight? Higher or lower than four point eight? Higher. 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 <laughs> wow, incredible work, incredible work. That is incredible. And Rick, round of applause for Rick. Karen. You win nothing. And how was how did Facebook cope with that one, honey? Did anyone on Facebook uh do well? They're smashing it in Facebook, Rich. They got every single one correct. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, it's nice to know that uh nice to know that we're sort of we're in sync. It's nice to know that uh, they're finally they're finally understanding the, the the films and the process. It's good, good team, good. I like I like us to be, I like it when we're winners. I like it when we're winners team. I didn't they were I didn't say they understood it, but they smashed the game that they were playing. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, you know, they made up their gonna, own rules and they're going to be idiots. They might as well be everyone. idiots. They might as well be savants. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the thing. <laughs> so uh, team, so team. Moving on, is every, who's who's ready for an act? Yes. Yay! Hey, yes. Hey, well, we need another hey. film quote. Does anyone have a film quote? Does anyone have a have a have a film quote they'd like to shout out to uh, cheer us along? Gordon's oh. alive. Gordon's alive. We do Gordon's <laughs> alive, shall we? <laughs> I mean, if, if ever, I'm continually trying to audition for the reboot. So, <laughs> Rich, the first time I met um, Brian Blessed, he said Gordon's alive three times unprompted. <laughs> <laughs> he also gave me a noogie. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, I expect nothing else. Apparently, he does like. He's like he's just sort of. I think he was genuinely a fan of the comic book series as well. Like when he did, he was like, "I love that comic. I can't wait to be in it." Like the second, the second time I met him, we had to keep putting a bag on his head to stop him being racist. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I mean, that's a less enjoyable story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were in the, park, the, park, the, the parking um, thing of Brent Cross Shopping Centre, and he just kept saying things like slitty-eyed, and we are like, oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, no. Wow. Uh, wow. That's great. Who's <laughs> 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 ready for <laughs> I just, I, just, I just turned into the Jeremy Vine show on Radio Two, where he's like, "Oh, that was the terrible news from the zoo in uh, the zoo in the zoo in Berlin, where they've shot all the tigers in the face, and there's just death and blood everywhere. I mean, it's terrifying scenes there, as we're all aware. So, here's REM. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've done. So, moving on. Who do we think? Who's we got a film? So let's do Gordon's Alive. You know, you know. Let's do Gordon's Alive. <laughs> let's do Gordon's Alive. After three, I'm sure you'll know the quote. If you don't know how the quote goes, it goes like this: Gordon's Alive. Well, actually, it doesn't go like that, but that's just how you just. That's how I do it. So, uh, <laughs> so direct depiction of the quote from the film. But after three, we landed Gordon's Alive. One, two, three. Gordon's, Gordon's Alive. alive. Yes. Excellent. Still not understanding what one, two, three means, but that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> baby steps. Baby steps. So, ladies and gentlemen, we start whooping and cheering. Yay! And welcome to Mr. Daniel Now it's a party. Nothing to be brought on to a bit of racism. 
<laughs> always great. Always good at a comedy gig. Lovely stuff. How's everybody? You all right? Yeah, yeah you. Yeah. You know, all, all I can see, like it, it looks really because Tom, Tom was on earlier, and he looked gorgeous and had a, a sort of red background, draped background, and it's very well lit. Unlike me, I look like um, I look like at any moment it's going to be like the bit in The Exorcist where Captain Howdy's face is like spliced in for a second. <laughs> it's kind of absolutely terrifying. <laughs> and how incredibly unprofessional of me not to have a, a better backdrop and lighting. But, um, in my in my defence, it's now night. It's night outside, so this is how I look. I, I look like I've been filmed in. Um, eight millimeter and blown up I'm very grainy I've got a lot of grain on me I'm quite gritty that's that's the difference between me and Tom Tuck yeah, yeah. Tom Tuck's, it's, it's like shiny but I'm gritty it's yeah more very, very much so yeah 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 I mean I am a big fan of the no wave aesthetic so uh, this is what I'm basically like in many ways I'm low budget <laughs> Well, let me you recreate your favourite sin. Didn't mean pretend you live in Hell's Kitchen in the city. I'm having a good, good, good sort of cinema day though, Rich, because I found out as of today that um, my TV, having not been able to receive it ever, is, is now picking up Talking Pictures TV, which is yes. um, ideal for me because it just shows everything that I ever want to watch. Yeah, that's, well, all, that's all I'm interested in. Talking Pictures TV, or as I said before. Uh, I had no idea Sid James made so many films. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's this one? Sid James? Sid James in this one? Of course he Ah, great. And also, it's like it's, it's really weird watching all those actors who you know from, like, say, the Carry On films or their sitcom or whatever is later on, being just, like, young, just sort of straightforward actors just doing character jobs and just doing, like, playing just, like, bankers and merchants and soldiers and things. It's, like, really great. And great films as well that you don't normally get to see. And lots of BFI documentaries and stuff like that. They have like, like little 15 minute things of like a thing was made in the 40s about the train going from like the, the night sleep or something like that. It's great. Yes, yeah, great. Oh, that's all I want to watch. Yeah, I know. I know. I, mean, I, know. <laughs> I, know. I'm, I know. I'm genuine. And also some great sort of 70s, terrible 70s, well, not terrible, you know, the schlocky, exciting, terrible 70s films that me and you love. They and I, was, I, was, I was quite excited about the prospect of Empire State. I think I'd quite enjoy that. Yeah, I'd I'll say this as well. I, Truck Turner is a, it deserves more than seven, I'd say. Good movie. Good movie, Truck Turner. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was. I, I thought that. I reckon that's a nine. <laughs> it is. Um, uh, it's it's really probably. good, Truck Turner. It's a proper. It's a proper film. Yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it's great. And also, like, Isaac Hayes is, is, is a good actor. You know, yeah, even yeah. Uh, you think of him as, you know, you know, you know, he's one of those, like, those sort of slash people who's, like, musician, actor, you know. But, like, he is actually good. He's one of those musicians that when you put him in stuff, he is good. In a way, you would go, Isaac yeah. Hayes is an actor, not just an, a, a musician who acts. Yeah. He did Escape from New York, of course, as well, didn't he? Yeah. In, um, it's probably his, his most well-known film, is it? South Park, bigger, longer, South longer. Park, South Park. That's probably what he's probably better known for. Yeah. Truck, truck Turner. That's what he's best known for, of course. He should be known for. Truck should be Turner. Known for. <laughs> um, who? Someone's mentioning Mission Impossible before. I, I went to see Mission Impossible Three. M I I I I. Um, <laughs> and when I went to see that, um, I sat two rows behind in the cinema. Christian Slater. It was just watching. Oh. Hello. He was in front of me watching the film. He was watching a film thinking, a few years ago, I could have been in this. <laughs> furious. That's been absolutely it's furious. Three. I mean, it's good, but it's no broken arrow, is it? <laughs> it <isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> ah. And it was good. I was impressed. I was impressed with your comparing skills. I liked uh, when um, Holly's sisters had, had um, hats on and things. You did what every uh, compare should do and ignore them. <laughs> More people who are dressed up. <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> Act online as you would in real life. Very much. Do not. Yeah. If someone's got a hat on. Do not try and draw any attention to them in a comedy game. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Flight of the Navigator has a really good um, opening scene, actually. Flight of the Navigator has that thing where it starts off where there's a Frisbee coming in. But you assume it's a flying saucer because you've probably seen it's a trailer and it is just a Frisbee. And a dog jumps up and grabs it in its mouth. <laughs> great, great opening. Yeah. And good use of uh, good use of uh, the Beach Boys. Yeah. <coughs> it, is. You know, it is a good movie. I quite like it. I've got, I've got, I'm quite fond of it. Isn't isn't the uh, isn't the lead actor in prison for armed robbery at the moment? The flight the navigator. Yeah, didn't Jerry Kramer grow up to be a bank robber? I know he's good at escaping, so keep an eye out. <laughs> keep an eye out for that kid. <laughs> Apparently so. You know, took me years when I was younger to realise that that isn't Fred Savage, and you know, it took me till I was in my teenage years to uh, realise that that's not wasn't Fred Savage in in. In front of the navigator, and I was very upset that it wasn't. Yeah, he's, he, he was. He, he, that was his era, though, wasn't it? Yeah, was it was not. It was not an incongruous decision on my no. part to mistake him. And also, he's he's filming a, monsters at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> it was, there wasn't the internet, and I was like eight. So you know, cut me some slack, guys. Jeez, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I'm not making a thing of it. <laughs> <laughs> When you was a when you was a, a a younger man, Metcalf, what were the sort of films that you you loved as a younger man? As a younger man, what was I? What did I like? I um all all those things, you know, very much that that kind of thing. Uh, I'm trying to think if I'd be unusual. I, well, I was a big fan of Watch It Down and oh. uh, the Water Babies and any sort of film for children that was also <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> that's what I liked. They're, they're the top two, I think. Um, anything that sort of give me sort of slightly um, unnerving, um, distressing uh, films like that is what I, I I got out of it most. <laughs> um, but also all, all the all the ones, all them ones, Flight of the Navigator, Never Ending Story, all your Star Wars. And when I say all of them. I mean, three of them. <laughs> um, you know, Willow. Yeah. You know, lots of films that I've, I don't really revisit now, just in case. Not worth it, is it? No. Not worth it. Not worth <laughs> it. Some films don't age well. <laughs> it's not even because they're like, it's not even for like dodgy reasons. It's just some films are just not good if you're not eight. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think a lot of the films I enjoyed most when I was eight probably wouldn't hold up very well. I mean, my biggest disappointment for something like that was probably realizing as a as a as a well, essentially as a teenager that Spaceballs isn't funny. Oh my god, it wasn't funny when you saw it first time. <laughs> it was funny when I was eight because they said shit a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> said shit oh, a lot. Still good. No, I mean, never good. Never good. I've got very fond memories of Spaceballs, but I don't know, it has been a while, but I, I remember it being very funny. Yeah, no? I remember it being funny when I was eight. And okay. I remember it for me because I was ill off, off school. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I did show it to um, some women when I was 20, and they all hated it. So. Women <laughs> 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 know best. Yeah, uh, I mean, I say I, I feel like I've opened a can of worms by bringing up uh, space balls. <laughs> I mean, it's not Austin Powers, but ah, I mean, the thing about space balls was that uh, that was the first thing I saw Bill Pullman in, and so I now every time I see Bill Pullman, I just think he's Lone Star. So whenever he's doing, whenever he's doing like any real acting, I'm always a bit sort of confused as to why Lone Star isn't is like acting and like being all serious and moody and brooding and. I think there was even a film where he has like a love scene, and I was like, "Why is Lone Star like? <laughs> really, this, this, is, this, this isn't right. This isn't right. Shouldn't happen." Uh, you know, and Bill Pullman's great, but I'm still like, "Why is Lone Star the president of America? This makes no sense." <laughs> I, always think, I always think Bill Pullman looks like a love child of Robin Williams and Robert De Niro. It's <laughs> <laughs> life together. It's like the, the two stars of the Awakenings yeah. put together in like a fly machine. Yeah. Something terrible happened during the coma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a sequel. It's a sequel. It's a sequel. And it's basically like... out. Very odd sequel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jump the shark in the second Awakenings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so we're gonna do some of your favourite scenes, Mr. Metcalf. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was talking to you about them in the week, so I wasn't sure what people wanted because I've done these. I've done these before, and I didn't know if I'd try and do the same ones or different ones. Or, but then, um, but then when you're talking about favourite opening scenes and things and closing scenes, they do kind of stay the same. Yeah, I could. Are there any other openings? Like, obviously, but were there any opening scenes you did you did toy with? You didn't end up coming coming up with openings. What do I like? Um. Spaceballs. Spaceballs, of course. Spaceballs, that's a big one. <laughs> um, Awakenings 2, I like the start of that. That <laughs> weird bit. Yeah. Um, but no, I think this is this was like, um, I think this is a proper solid opening. Yeah. I think, uh, I can't think of much better. So should uh, we tell you what your favourite opening to any film ever is? Uh, it's A Matter of Life and Death. Yes. <laughs> yes. The matter of life and death. How Pressburger, has everyone has everyone has everyone seen the matter of life and death? Um I've never seen the actual film, but I have seen a reenactment with Nat Metcalf. Um it's better. <laughs> yeah. better the film. Yeah. I, I I saw that and I decided I was never gonna watch the film because I just didn't see how it could be bettered. It's a de it's the definitive version, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It, everybody, after you've seen this, also go to YouTube and see the previously recorded one. <laughs> <laughs> because you know this one is good. You know how like there's a film version of a famous play and you think that the person in the film nailed it and then you see like someone does it on stage and you're like that's a definitive version like that that's that's you know that's willie loman right there you know that kind of thing like you see that's what this is you know like you you know you know that david niven's in the movie and you're like yeah fine but this this is the definitive version <laughs> but, but i think that's a shame really because the matter of life and death is it's an incredible film it's it's also one of my favorite films ever and it's a shame if you wouldn't watch the rest of the film. And I think what's good about this opening is it feels like the kind of thing where you go, how are you going to top that? And they do all the way through. It's absolutely perfect film. Such a treat if you've never seen it. Well, if also you've never seen it, it's very interesting is that, um, like, the fantasy scenes, for want of a better phrase, like mm -hmm. the stuff where they're in heaven and the afterlife, that's in black and white. But life is in colour. Yes, which is a, like another interesting thing because you'd think it would be the other way, you know, traditionally it'd be the other way around. It's like it's just very, it's just a useful thing of like the Jack Cardiff cinematography and the minds of Paul and Pressburger, like working, like going like nuts, but also li with the limitations of what they could do with wartime rationing of film stock and stuff is just incredible. Like, like the bit who wakes up on the beach was supposed to be a fade to black. Do you know there's a bit on the beach? Supposed to be a fade to black. They're like, that's boring. We don't want to do a fade to black. So Jack Cardiff breathed in the lens and went, oh, what about that? I mean, that looks great. We'll do that. Do you know, like, it was all that sort of stuff. It's just great, like, great stuff. Uh, I, I, I think it's incredible. It's an incredible film. I, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And also, it was like a sort of a weird unity movie of like, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> like, um, you know, the British guy gets the American girl and, uh, yeah. you know, the nationalist xenophobia is shot down in court and love conquers all and you know it's like it's a very sort of positive like and it's only a year it's only a year after the war as well yeah. really it's just like it's a very close to all the events it's portraying in this way that you'd think might be treating it a little lightly but it isn't really it's proper it's proper stuff it's proper kind of punch to your hair film i think yeah it doesn't it's also it's interesting watch a film that doesn't like Pull its punches, even though you're going to deal with sensitive and not so, you know, there's lots you can't be that horrific and explicit in like 1945, 1946, but it's still quiet. Well, they were quite, they were very criticized in their day, Powell and Pressburger, I think. And it's only in, in looking back that I think they've kind of been given their due of how good they were. And I think a lot of people found it a bit tasteless, a lot of what they were doing, but. Um, also, now, they, it does feel quite they are like art filmmakers, aren't they? So, like, not everything, everything they do is quite not standard in the way that a lot of people have, like, vision, you know, but they were, like, a lot of stuff they do is art. And you think of things like the red shoes and all, like, what's, you know, like, a lot of these movies are, like... But they're populists as well. So, they, I mean, in a way, they're not... I don't think they're that much different from, like, a Spielberg or something. They're very kind of populist -y and very... 
they're, you know, they're making films for like a mass audience. They're not. But they're, but they're sort of making them about really weird subject matters and stuff. Oh. <laughs> they, 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 they think they're populist, but they go, you know what everyone wants to see? Film about nuns feeling sexually repressed in a mountain. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and, they, and they're right it's great but you know what i mean it's like this is the idea what's going to be the blockbuster for this weekend it's like a you know, subtle nuanced performance by lots of nuns i mean i often think the the uh the jokes i make are for a mass audience and over <laughs> over 13 years i realized they're not you know <laughs> absolutely not and it took a while it took a while to learn that but i thought i thought it's for everyone <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to matter of life and death. I'm assuming you're going to be uh, David Niven. We could switch if it makes it easier. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you're you're perfect as a. Uh, if anyone is the modern David Niven, it's you, Metcalf. <laughs> <laughs> Said nobody ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tom Tuck's having a go, but uh... <laughs> I mean, yeah, if any, sure, surely, surely, with his hair of spun gold, absolutely beautiful looking. <laughs> but you've got you but you've but you've got class in here metcalf you've got class in here that's where that's where it counts <laughs> you're a gentleman inside yeah i mean you think i've got a classless heart <laughs> <laughs> and it also suggests that I mean, i'm not classy on the outside <laughs> I mean, I think both of you are taking the, the, the wrong bits of that compliment to uh, be happy about. I'm a, I'm a classy guy. <laughs> like every conversation on the internet, you eventually just become <laughs> a lost cause. Shut up, Hitler. Yes, so. <laughs> no. A matter of life and death. Do you want to set the scene? And I will. I've got my uh, radio. Um, who, who's in this one? I'm going to start turning videos off. It's just me and Nathaniel, and then everyone else. You're going to go in a minute, but don't be just perturbed. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, just the logistics. I'm going to see if I can do the Thanos thing and get rid of people. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> They're going. Well, should we start? Yes. Right. So. Uh, Nathaniel's in an aircraft going down, and I am, I am uh, June, the lovely American lady who is on the radio with him, trying to sort of take him through his, his carnage. Are we ready? Okay. Request your position, request your position. Come in, Lancaster, come in, Lancaster. Position nil. Repeat, nil. Age, 27. 27, did you get that? It's very important. Education, interrupted, violently interrupted. Religion, Church of England, politics, conservative by nature, labor by experience. What's your name? I cannot read you, cannot read you, request your position. Can you see our signals? Oh, give me my scallop shell of quiet, my staff of faith to walk upon, my strip of joy, eternal diet, my bottle of salvation, my gallon of glory, hopes, true gauge, and thus I'll find my pilgrimage. So Walter Raleigh wrote that. I'd rather written that than flown through Hitler's legs. I cannot understand you. Hello, Lancaster. We are sending signals. Can you see our signals? Come in, Lancaster. Come in, Lancaster. But at my back, I always hear time's winged chariot hurrying near. And yonder at all before us lie deserts of vast eternity. Andy Marvel wrote that. What a marvel. What's your name? Are you receiving me? Repeat, are you receiving me? Request your position. Come in, Lancaster. You seem like a nice girl. I can't give you my position. Instruments gone. Crew gone, too. All except Bob here. My sparks. He's dead. The rest all bailed out on my orders. 0335. Do you get that? Crew bailed out. 0335. Station Warrender Bomber, Bomber Group AG. G. George. Send a signal, got that? Station Warren and Bomber Group, A. Apple, G. George. They'll be sorry about Bob. We all liked him. Hello, G. George. Hello, G. George. Are you all right? Are you trying to land? Do you want to fix? Name's not G. George. It's P. Peter. Peter D. Carter. D's for David. Squadron leader, Peter Carter. No, I'm not going to land. Undercarriage is gone. Inner port's on fire. 
I'm bailing out presently. I'm bailing out. Take a telegram. Got your message. Received your message. We can hear you. Telegram to my mother, Mrs. Michael Carter, 88 Hampstead Lane, London, Northwest. 88 Hampstead Lane, London. Tell her that I love her. You'll have to write this for me. But I wanted to know that is. They loved her very much. <laughs> that I've never shown it to her. Not really. That I've all loved her always, right up to the end. Give my love to my two sisters too. Don't forget about them. Received your message. We can hear you. Are you wounded? Repeat. Are you wounded? Are you bailing out? What's your name? <laughs> June. Yes, June. I'm bailing out. I'm bailing out, but there's a catch. I've got no parachute. Hello? Hello, Peter. Do not understand. Hello? Hello, Peter. Can you hear me? Hello, June. Don't be afraid. It's quite simple. We all, we've all had it, and I'd rather jump than fry. After the first 1,000 feet, what's the difference? I shan't know anything anyway. I say, I hope I haven't frightened you. No, <laughs> I'm not frightened. Good girl. <laughs> Your spokes, you said he was dead. Hasn't he got a shoot? Cut to ribbons. Cannon shell, June. Are you pretty? <laughs> uh, not bad. I. Uh... <laughs> can you hear me as well as I can hear you? Yes. <laughs> you've got a good voice. And you've got guts, too. It's funny. <laughs> I know dozens of girls, been in love with some of them, but it's an American girl who I've never seen and never shall see, who will hear my last words. It's funny. It's rather sweet, June. If you're around when they pick me up, turn your head away. Perhaps we can do something, Peter. Let me report it. No, no. No one can help. Only you. Let me do this my way. I want to be alone with you, June. Where were you born? Boston. Mass? Yes. That's a place to be born. History was made there. Are you in love with anybody? No, no, no. Don't answer that. <laughs> I could love a man like you, Peter. I love you, June. I, your life and I'm leaving you. Where do you live? On the station? No, in a big country house about five miles from here. Leewood House. Old house? Yes, very old. Good. I'll be a ghost and come and see you. You're not frightened of ghosts, are you? It'd be awful if you were. I'm not frightened. What time will you be home? Well, I'm on duty till six, and I have breakfast in the mess, and then I have to cycle half an hour. I often go along the sands and home. This is such nonsense. No, it's not. It's some of the best sense I've ever heard. I was lucky to get you, June. Can't be helped about the parachute, or I'll have my wings soon anyway. Big white ones. Hope they haven't got all modern. I'd hate to have a prop instead of wings. What do you think the next world's like? I've got my own ideas. Oh, Peter. I think it starts where this one leaves off, or where this one could leave off if we could all listen to Plato and Aristotle and Jesus. With all our little earthly problems solved, but with greater ones, worth the solving. I'll know soon enough anyway. I'm signing off now, June. Goodbye. Goodbye, June. Hello, G for George. Hello, G for George. Hello, G George. Hello. So long, Bob. I'll see you in a minute. You know what we wear by now? Proper wings. <laughs> Steve! <laughs> there we go. Good movie. Woo! Yay! Yay! I mean, if you've not seen it, that is exactly how it is. Exactly right what it's like. So oh, it's really, yeah, it's really, that was really touching. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone, yeah. is everyone, is there a, not a dry eye in the house? No. Uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, it's beautiful isn't it? <laughs> it was beautiful. So we're going to move on to your next... I don't, I don't get much acting work, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is weird. You're, you're, you know, you're a natural. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball, which is the tragedy. So he's... <laughs> uh, what we've got to go for next scene. Obviously, we've chosen now for people who've seen the friendly before. We've, we've gone off piste. We've chosen yeah. something that you've not done for. I think well, you have. I think you've done it once before, but uh, no, not, I've not done this. I kind of it's one that I've, I've, I always think about as like that's one of my favourite films. Did I did I tell you as well that I want to be I want to be Lionel Barrymore? Is that all right? Yes. Okay. So yeah. this is actually from my favourite <laughs> I mean, favourite. The thing you don't hear a lot. <laughs> 
Have a, you know, we're like playing a game. It's like arguing in the playground. I want to be Lionel Barrymore. You're always <laughs> Lionel Barrymore. Where's Lionel Barrymore? to be Lionel Barrymore? Is it just the, the kind of thing that I say? <laughs> this is just, you know, just flashbacks to this playground again. But never mind. Is it just <laughs> the two of you for this one? Just the two of us. Yeah, just two. So would you like to explain what this scene is and what the film is? Well, this is from my favourite film, so I always felt bad that I got left out because this is my very favourite film. This is from It's a Wonderful Life. Mm. Um, and it's uh, and, and very much actually has a very similar, in a way, opening scene to... Uh, or the pre-opening scene of uh, Matter of Life and Death in that you get the bit of um, these like heavenly bodies talking to each other. You have God talking to various angels. And the beginning of It's a Wonderful Life has a very similar thing to the beginning of A Matter of Life and Death that comes just after that bit. So all, all, the, all my favorite films are all slightly connected, I think, in a funny way. But this is my very favorite film, and it's a scene that happens about halfway through, um, and it's a scene between uh, George Bailey, who's James Stewart, and Mr. Potter, who's played by Lionel Barrymore, who's the kind of baddie. And in this scene, um, uh, uh, Potter has been told that George Bailey's basically taken over this whole plot of land. And so he, he sort of realises that in order to kind of quash him, he has to try and employ him. But George, his whole life, has been against Potter. And uh, Potter is basically trying to tempt him to join his organisation. Yeah. It's a really good... Obviously, before we do the scene, it's like it's a great, like... It, like it's a wonderful life. It is... It, 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 it is a great movie, but it's not just the overall, uh, the overall like feeling of the movie. It is actually like every scene is really good. It's a it's a very oh, rare perfect, absolutely perfect. Like, every bit is every bit is good. Like you know, it's almost like it's like it has an anthology vibe to it. Where mm. you know, it's like every scene is like a standalone scene. It's just like incredible. It's, right? cut, it's cut so tightly that it, there's not a bit in it that doesn't pay off. Yeah, but yeah. everything is it's that sort of old Hollywood screenwriting where there's not there's not like a second wasted. Every scene is like paying off another scene or setting up another scene or most of the time doing both. And I think even like when they would film it, they would film it because they had like to do stuff quickly and things like that. Like when they do the phone call and the phone, the, the kiss, the phone call scene, they just had another person on a different set being filmed so that the phone call was <laughs> done. So they didn't like do one, but so they just to keep it. Pace. They just filmed both into the conversation at once, like which was something they didn't really do at the time. And then you know that sort of thing. It's like it's really sort of good. And apparently, um, the kiss was uh, that had to be edited to uh, because it was too, too it was too too uh, too like too passionate. It was. It's it's full on. It's full on. The kiss. And he goes like that to glad to cut the embrace because the censor was furious about it. So uh, yeah. that, was the, that was the problem. The chance for a lifetime, George. That's what he says. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And then they invented fake snow for this film as well. Because, oh, did um, they? I didn't know that. Previous to this film, apparently, they would just paint cornflakes white. Okay. Uh, but that's noisy, so they have to redub uh, everything. Uh, because they didn't want that, because they couldn't do it. They, they basically had to invent fake snow. Like to make it like walkable, and it was filmed during a heat wave, so it, all, the, all the snow. There, that's why when he's on the bridge, it's not it's not him acting like he's all stressed and worried about throwing himself off a bridge. He's literally like perspiring because it's. About <laughs> 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 don't ruin it. No, don't ruin it. But it's like it's a wonderful life. It's filmed in like the, one of the hottest Julys <laughs> in American <laughs> history. <laughs> one of the things for this film, you know, in um. So the scene we're going to do, like, and it could be real, but twenty thousand dollars—that's the equivalent today of about four hundred grand. Right. Okay. With it, for, for like, uh, with it allowing for things like that, yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll do this scene. So if everyone's seen, they, uh, uh, it's a wonderful life. There's some weird noise happening. So I don't know if that's me or you. Oh, I can't hear anything on no. my end. Like a weird buzzy hum. That's fine. We'll just, it'll add to it. It'll add to it. It'll be like a sort of cyberpunk version of it. <laughs> uh, if anyone knows who that is, you can you can mute yourself. Yeah. I don't know who that noise is. That's fine, man. So we're going to do It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it doesn't, Mr. Potter. In the in the vast configuration of things, I'd say you are nothing but a scurvy little spider. You, and that goes for you too. And that goes for you too. Seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. Oh. <coughs> Fantastic. Yeah, Fantastic work. Mm. Fantastic work. Fantastic work. So, so team. So, moving on to the final scene, Mr. Metcalf. The final scene. Uh, obviously, there are, as I say, there are certain choices which are, you know, correct. You know, there's no right or wrong answers, but there are also some very specific scenes which are correct as being the right right ending. So I think this is one of them. Would you like to tell everyone what your favourite ending uh, to any film ever is? It's the ending to Back to the Future. Yes. I think it's, it's sort of by how excited I was at the time I first saw it, I think. And I think it's a film that, because it doesn't actually give you the, uh, it doesn't give you a chance to sort of settle down. It just keeps ramping up right up until the end. Yeah, it's great. And I think it also, yeah, just amazing, like, to, to sort of have a film end. I oh, was just great, like, really good. And it was, it was genuinely, genuinely as exciting as well. Like, when you, oh, yeah. There are certain moments in the film where it's hard to remember, like, just how, like, oh, my God, it was yeah. when you first saw certain things. This is one of those, like, <gasps> like you know, OMG, mind dot, blown dot. You know, it was like, <laughs> it was great. Um and it is very exciting. You think because it's great because you go. If it hadn't had that ending, it would be a fine like everything's back. Oh, to yeah. the, everything's back. To film the, still. We're gonna do. We're gonna go one more, one better. You know, it's just it's just great. Um, so uh, I think we're gonna. Who are you gonna be for this one? Well, I'll be Marty, but I can't really do. I can't really do Michael J. Fox, so I'm just gonna do it in my own voice. Well, I'm gonna. I'll be. <laughs> I'll be Doc, but obviously I can't do. Uh, uh, the impression. Oh, so I'm going to do what I usually do when I have to do this: is do Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a crook. It just seems like he's doing Nixon. Um, and of course, we need to get Mr. Tom Tuck back as Jessica. Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. I got the I got the tease of the Tom Tuck stuck in me. Like, <laughs> be back. Tom Tuck. He's an actual <laughs> human being. The host has disabled the video. Ah, we need Tom Tuck back in. Um, yeah, I have, I have, uh... Okay, there we go. Okay. He's coming, there he is! There he is! <laughs> now, he, now, now there's a look. There's a look for it. Flop. Ah. <laughs> He's Quite so right. proud of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Again, even his wig matches the backdrop. <laughs> I, mean, I, I feel like a piece of shit now. <laughs> I'm someone's taking me You didn't even bring a relay. I know. I know. <laughs> The curtain literally matches the drapes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, he's not wearing the body. He's not wearing the life preserver in this scene, is he? So, uh, no, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Just wearing the, you know, so that's a, that would be an anachronistic affectation. <laughs> that's that's so, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's mesmerising. Someone in Facebook has just said "hot!" Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Fair enough. Just clarify you're enough. talking about Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I, I I'm waiting for you to do your first action before I do my first line. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. We're opening the garage door. <laughs> How about a ride, mister? Jennifer, oh, are you a sight for sore eyes? <laughs> Marty. I mean, look at you. <laughs> You're acting like you haven't seen me for a week. I haven't. <laughs> you okay? Is oh, yeah. Room? 
Everything is great. A DeLorean arrives and Doc Brown gets out. Maury, you got to come back with me. Where? <laughs> back to the future. Wait a minute. What are you doing, Doc? I need fuel. The plutonium chamber has now been replaced with Mr. Fusion, which is powered by garbage. Doc refuses the coal with an empty beer can. Go ahead, quick. Get in the car. No, 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 Doc. I just got here. Jennifer's here. We're going to take the new truck for a spin. Well, bring her along, too. This concerns her, too. Wait a minute, Doc. What are you talking about? What happens to us in the future? Do you all become arseholes or something? No, 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 Marty. Both you and Jennifer turn out fine. It's your kids, Marty. Something's got to be done about your kids. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need roads. And then the car takes off and it flies! <laughs> the car flies! Fly. It flies! I can't believe it! I've never seen anything like it before, it nor would I see it again. Oh, it's yeah, the first thing it just flies towards the screen. I think it's going to smash me in the face, but it does. It's the end of the movie! <laughs> 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 Back to the future, everyone. Back to the future. <laughs> Excellent work, team. Excellent. Well, we've made it, team. We've made it. <laughs> we got there. We got there. We uh, we've made it. Uh, I think that's that's uh, that's uh, that's the end. Uh, unless there's anything pressing on Facebook, we need to deal with. Um. No, no, it was all just about Tom in a wig. Ten out of ten would smash. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> um, squee. <laughs> sure. Uh, you I mean, can help me out by in... starting your videos. <laughs> I mean, I've, I wouldn't you know, have to do this admin myself then. I feel like what's exciting is, uh, you know, it's just important occasionally to sometimes just got a sex perfect movie up a little bit. And uh, <laughs> hey, anytime nice. you need to add some sex, give me a call. Yeah. <laughs> just nice to have yeah. Alan and eye candy on, on occasionally, you know, just a nice. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit of production value, isn't it? A bit of production value. <laughs> There we go. Bye -bye. So, Mr. Metcalf, before we uh, depart, where can people find you online? And uh... well, I'm I'm Nat Metcalf on Twitter, and on Facebook and Instagram, I'm Nat Metcalf Comedy. And I didn't like that. I don't like to promise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't like to. I like to under deliver. No, I don't like to under deliver. <laughs> I like to. Oh, hang on. <laughs> you don't like to. No, no I was on. right first time. <laughs> right first time. I under the limit. Got Nat Metcalf <laughs> drama on uh, Instagram. <laughs> yeah, that Metcalf drama. Yeah, I should do for my acting work. Yeah, for your I'll acting work. Under, yeah. Yeah. under this. This will be my acting show reel that I'll send around. <laughs> well, yeah. You have a show reel. Just watch. Just watch the entirety of this episode on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Bound to get some work now. I've heard. I've heard it's a good time to get into uh, drama. <laughs> get into perfect time to be in the the live the live performing arts. Yeah. Good time. Looking yeah, forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to everyone for watching. Thank you to uh, our acts. As I remember, uh, at Turley God, uh, check out his stuff, buy his DVD, or, DV or buy his DVD of Straight to DVD. That show is brilliant as well. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant show. If you want one, because I've got them all in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I want one. Uh, yeah. I definitely want one. We'll get in touch. We'll get in touch. If you've enjoyed this, uh, like, do make a donation to Kofi, Kofi.com, which is standing. Or, as I say, if you would prefer to make a donation to Black Lives Matter, there will be information on the page. I would recommend that. But any, whatever you feel like is your best option, do that. But support good causes, support. Be good. Be, as a quote, but it said, be excellent to each other. I'm sure there's, uh, there's more astute minds being much better at uh, uh, explaining what needs to happen. But... Uh, uh, sadly, the best I can do is to tell you to be excellent to each other. Uh, but I do mean it, so do be excellent. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, thank you ever so much for watching. If you'd like to be in the front row, this is an option you can just so do check. There is an option you can be in the front row. Uh, uh, information is on the page. Uh, uh, for everyone else who's going to go, we're in the we're in the front row. We're going to stay, stick around and have a lovely little 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 after party. So that's what you're missing by not <laughs> being in the in the green room. Uh, uh, or maybe you're not missing. Who knows? You, I get to spend the rest of the evening looking at Tom Tuck and his wig. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's now, he's I might get the other wig out. Yeah. <laughs> but once again, a round, of, a round of applause for the acts you saw. We saw Tom Tuck. Tom hey. Tom Tuck. Hey. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back next Saturday at 9 pm. Farewell.